Okay, welcome to Exotic PC's G53JW teardown and installation of the secondary hard drive back bracket. Uh, the hard drive brackets and the hard drives, uh, you guys have been waiting a long time for them. They're going to start shipping here. Uh, a couple of them are full set has already shipped. Some of you may be receiving that soon. Uh, others you'll receive it shortly as we work our way through all of the orders that we need to ship those to. Uh, this is going to show you how to tear down the computer. Uh, it's not a complete tear down. Uh, but it, there is quite a bit of disassembly that needs to happen to get access to the bottom panel here. Um, I will say, and I'll reiterate this probably a couple times, that if you're not comfortable doing this at any point, that um, don't continue to do it. Um, this should never require any sort of um, pressure or um, any sort of physicalness to it. Everything should be pretty easy to lift off or remove. If if it comes to the point where you can't get it off, then a screw is still screwed down or something isn't right. You don't want to just pull it because you could be tearing something. Um, any physical damage that happens to the machine is your responsibility to either work around or to get it pay to get it fixed. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, first things first, we're gonna remove the keyboard here. So we're gonna open up our machine, get to this point. We wanna take a smaller style screwdriver, something that can fit within these. Um, something this size is probably preferable. Um, so pretty much the smallest flathead screwdriver you can find. If you've got another tool, it's not a screwdriver, but it's thin and flat, um, that should work too. But you wanna try to have the, probably the thinnest end that you can. Um, there are five notches at the top here. We're going to label them one through five. Uh, we aren't going to start with one, we're going to start with two. Uh, as you can see, the notch in here, the idea is to get our screwdriver down in there <clears throat> so that you can push the little latch out of the way and then quickly remove it. You can see that the keyboard popped up a little bit. So we'll press it back down, it just locks like that. We're going to press that out of the way and then remove our keyboard. And you can see that time I didn't get it up. So we're going to push it out of the way and then pop it up. So it's, it's able to be lifted up. Then we'll move on to three. As you can see, you just, gotta, you just gotta press it in there just right and then remove it quickly. Okay. It'll take, probably take you a couple of tries. As you can see here, mine's still deciding to uh, stay up. And you can kind of set your finger like I am here along there if it doesn't want to come up. But you shouldn't be lifting, you're just holding. Um, now that we've got this, Lift it up here, we can move on to one, and then the keyboard is, is out. Um, be careful because we are connected here to these ribbons, so we don't want to pull up too hard. Uh, <clears throat> unlike the G73 keyboard, there's no stickiness or glue or anything that's holding it down. They've got a pad here that if you you know, you know you're not going to open it up again, you can remove this and then it'll really stick down hard, but I re don't recommend doing that. The keyboard's fine without it. The next step here, we're going to remove a couple of these ribbons. Um, this is, this is our, our ribbon that controls the backlighting. Um, we want to make sure that when we remove this, you're basically just pressing on the top and then on the bottom, and then we remove it. We want to pay special attention to the direction that those little metal strips, as you can see, I'll flip this over. Uh, you've got nothing down here, and it would kind of look like, because of the way the tab is set, that we should put this back in like this. However, as you can see, it wasn't installed that way by ASUS. Every one of these is a little bit different, so some of you, um, you know, will have them facing down, and some will have them facing up, like this one. So when I put this back in, I obviously I pulled it out, and I saw that the, uh, that the uh, metal pieces were facing up, so I'm just going to slide it back in there and lock it down, which I'll show you here in a second. But you want to make note of that, because your backlighting won't work if you don't put it in right. Same thing happens on this. Press on the top, we press on the bottom, we make sure that it's fully out, and then we just slide it out. This one here, we had the, the metal strips facing downward, so we're just going to pay attention. This one, uh, like I said before, it makes sense the way that it's plugged in. Um, now the keyboard is removed, we can set it aside. Next thing here, we've got a little piece of tape that's covering this up. This is just holding in um, place this other ribbon here. So you can just kind of lift that up. So we'll want to probably tape it back down here in a second. Um, this ribbon connects the touchpad. So if your touchpad isn't working after you get all this together, you take off your keyboard, check to make sure that this was actually put in there. So this one here should be straightforward. It should be the same way every time. But just like the other one, we move the locking mechanism away from it and then just slide it out. Um, this one here, we should have the metal pieces facing up 
every time. Uh, we haven't seen any di you know difference there, so we just want to make sure that when we pull that out, that that is the case. It should be. Okay, next thing we want to do, we're going to go ahead and just remove uh, these two screws here. Uh, none of the other screws that are, are in the, the connected in here under the keyboard need to be touched by this. So we're just going to remove this screw right here. And this screw actually um, is part of the screw system that um, connects the, the bottom plate to here. Uh, so there, there may be some uh, things we talk about later concerning that. Uh, the other one here, this is another little screw uh, that we're going to remove. This here holds this locking mechanism in place. Um, that's what's been deceiving a lot of people. Is they've been just trying to take this off or unclip it somehow. But what this does is you, you just kind of put your screwdriver in here. You don't want to press it all the way down because your motherboard is underneath there. So you, you, this is going to take a little bit of force uh, to push over to the side. But you just want to be really careful. It doesn't take a ton and you don't want to, oops, you don't want to press all the way down. But as you can see, um, and you can even use two hands like this to slide it back and forth. Um, don't press all the way down into the key or into the motherboard so you're not scratching it and just slide it over to the side. Now you can, if you have longer fingernails, I don't, but even without long fingernails you can kind of get this to pop up a little bit as you can see I'm doing here. Just getting it to lift up. It's going to clip out. It doesn't take a lot of force to do, but you're just pulling up on it and around the edges. Okay, and now this here, we can just slide this out because we've already undone this ribbon. So this piece, we can now set aside with our keyboard. One thing I would like to mention while we're here, if any of you want to upgrade the RAM, the uh, fourth RAM slot's underneath here underneath the keyboard. Um, so if you want to put in some extra RAM. Um, the other one is actually underneath here. Uh, so you really can't access that without doing a full teardown and voiding your warranty. Um, so you don't want to do that. But if you want to add that extra sticker RAM, um, if you didn't have Exotic PC do it for you, you can go ahead and do that there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is remove the other screws that will release our bottom panel. So um, there are a couple screws that we don't have to do here, but we're just going to start from the top, the top right hand corner here. We're just going to get rid of this screw, move down. Get rid of this screw. Just keep working our way. Now there are a couple screws that hold down the hard drive base, and those don't need to be removed. This is one of them, and this is one of them. Uh, you can remove them, um, but it kind of releases your hard drive uh, brackets a little bit, so you don't really need to, or you probably shouldn't. Uh, we'll just so we'll skip these two, move on to the next. Just keep moving our way over here. Okay, this screw that's right here is our final screw. Now, if you didn't remove magnets, there we go. If you didn't remove this screw up here in the beginning, um, that could be the reason why this panel isn't going to open up for you very well. So the screws that hold down the panel are this up here. We've got that one, that one, this one, here. Here, we skip these two and then move on as we go over here. Now we can set our screws aside, and we'll close our lid, flip over the computer, and now you'll just take, you can see it's already kind of lifted up for us a little bit, so you don't have to use the screwdriver to pop it up if you can get your hand underneath there. But this again is just going to kind of unclip itself. It will take a slight bit of pressure to do, but if it all it does not come up easily that means that you have a screw still in there somewhere it should just lift off like that and now we've got access to <clears throat> the belly of our machine for RAM upgrade Wi-Fi card upgrade and where we're gonna put our secondary hard drive okay the next thing we're going to go over is 
Um, if you, if you, your machine might, or your, your bracket and hard drive might already come assembled from Exotic PC. If you were sent your hard drive first and we're just sending you your brackets now, you'll need to do this step. Um, otherwise, those of you who already have it together can move on a little bit. Um, we're going to be putting this in the left side. As you can see, these brackets are labeled um, connection left, connection right. Um, they're universal brackets that could be worked for either side. We're going to be putting it in the left-hand side, so we want to make sure that our SATA connector like this is facing connect left and they've labeled each of these little screw holes here with L's and R's for us so we just want to line up our side screws here with the L. Uh, Exotic PC will also include whoops, four screws for you uh, to place into the sides so we're just going to line up with the L and then we're going to put their little fatter screws that look like this. You would have gotten also a tinier, thinner screw that we're going to use here in a second, but you've got four equal screws to this. So we're going to go ahead and place our screws in the bracket here. Just going to take that. You don't want to screw it down too tight, but just Tight enough to get a nice solid fit. Okay, now that we've got that set, we're going to line up our SATA connector with this side here, left facing the piece. This here will help us slide it in. So the idea is to set the bracket down in here and you can see that there's a little plastic uh, piece right here and the idea is to get this metal piece underneath that plastic piece. So we're going to kind of set this down back as far as we can and then we're just going to slide this in. Okay, so you know this piece up here, this metal piece should fit under this plastic lip. This metal piece here should fit under that plastic lip. Now we grab our other little tiny screws here. We're going to take those, screw them down, whoops, screw them down into this side here. And that holds the bracket in place. Grab our other little tiny screw. And that holds this bracket on this side in place. And that's really all there is to it as far as getting this put in. So if that's the only goal that you had here, not upgrading RAM, Wi-Fi, or anything else, we can start closing up. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do here, we're going to put our little guy back on here. One thing we will say is they put some stabilizers on here, these foamy pieces, and for the time being, until we screw it back down, that's going to cause uh, this lip here, this piece, to, to kind of flip up a little bit. Um, and this isn't necessarily the easiest thing to get cooked back in but once again it doesn't take a lot of pressure if you're not once again you're not comfortable doing this uh, we can arrange to have it shipped to exotic PC to be done you can talk to someone in sales or service about that uh, so we're just going to kind of fit this top piece in first you can see there are places that each of these little clips will fit into we're going to kind of set those in place and then we just set it down and you're just going to slowly you know kind of press yourself here you kind of press on the front here to, to get these little pieces to clip down into place. Same thing here. So once you think you've kind of got it all clipped into place, then remember this side's gonna gonna flip up a little bit until you get it screwed down. Okay? But I promise once it's screwed down, then it's then it's in place. So we just want to get it all in there and it's gonna kind of come up. So you might want to hold it down as you set it down. Then we're just gonna lift up here. <clears throat> And then we'll start with the right hand side here. And we'll just do these here for these here first. We're just gonna screw those down. Don't over tighten, don't under tighten, just tighten it just enough to where you feel some resistance. So we'll get all these guys here. <clears throat> I 
And if you did take these out, you want to make sure you put them back in now. Um, but hopefully you didn't take those out. Hopefully we skipped over those. Doesn't hurt anything if you did, but it's just easier if you leave them in. And after we screw these down, we're just going to want to double check before we close up to make sure <clears throat> that everything looks okay underneath, that we got everything clipped down in, that everything is tightened. So we'll just go ahead and lift it up now, take a quick look at it. We want to just check around all the edges to make sure that everything is kind of pressed down. And as you can see, we no longer have it lifting up there. It's screwed down and everything looks pretty good here. Um, you can just see how it's supposed to look. Um, obviously there's going to be that little line there all the way around. Um, mine here looks looks pretty good. If, if yours is lifted up in any way, uh, any of the edges, you didn't get it clipped down in there correctly, you just want to go ahead and remove all of your screws again, and then um, uh, just re-clip it back down and re-screw it in. Now we'll go ahead and put this screw here back into its place. Remember this was the final screw that holds down the bottom plate. It was the first screw that we removed. We'll put that in. We want to make, still make sure that this little guy here, this hole is all the way to the left because now we're going to grab our wrist plate and then we're just going to slide this little piece here through the bottom right here. So it's going to slide through and then we can just, oops, we can just pull it on through. It doesn't want to be cooperative here today. So you pull that through and now that's all the way through. So we want to kind of pull that as tight as we can. The next trick is to getting this in place. It kind of sets down and then kind of sits back in here first. So you kind of set it down and slide it into place a little bit. You want to make sure that it's completely kind of pressed in before we press the other parts down. Next, this requires a little bit of pressure, a little more than what you've done yet, but still not too much. So we just kind of clip everything back into place and you'll just feel it and hear it clicking back into place. Now the next thing, it's going to kind of lift up until we lock it down. So what I do is I just use my forearm and apply some pressure to it to hold it down while I take this and lock it into place. So now that you've got that locked into place, it should be fully down. As we can see, mine is. It's not lifting up at all. Now we'll take our little screw here and tighten locking our mechanism back into place and you just want to take double check take a, a you know good look at at your wrist rest here just to make sure that you know it's got a little bit of give just because it's kind of a gummy texture um, but that it's not lifting up it's not uh, lifting up here at the bottom or anything either okay okay now that we've got that plate on there, the next thing we're going to do is get this back into place. So we want to make sure, just kind of lift it up out of the way here, we want to make sure that both of our little clips here are forward as far as they can go in the unlocked position. And then just take this and position it so that, see I kind of unlocked, I locked it back into place. So just make sure they're pushed all the way forward. And you can kind of hold it and use a tool or something. It'll just kind of slide into place on its own. It's got a lot of pressure here that it's pushing against. Um, so then now that it's in there, you see the black line is lined up. We want to lock it into place. So you're just going to kind of press both sides until it's completely locked down. And you can kind of just give it a little tug and see that it's not there. It's not uh, going to move. So now we put our tape back down here and tape it into place. Grab our keyboard. I found that it's always easiest to put uh, the yellowy, orangey, ribbon in first. Um, some of you will find maybe you disagree, but that's what I, it's just the longest, that's what I find is easiest. So I remembered that our metal pieces were up when it was installed, so we want to slide that in there as far as we can get it, and then we want to lock it down again by pressing the mechanism towards the rest of everything else to lock it down and give it a little tug. See, it's not not done. We know that this one was facing down, and this is going to kind of be funky. You might have to set your keyboard up um, on that side to get this in here. 
Um, I mean, there's a little pressure on this. You just want to make sure you're not doing too much so it doesn't rip it. Um, this one's going to be a little bit easier just because we've got this little blue piece that's kind of a, a strong piece of plastic that we can press up against as I'm pressing on the opposite side here. We can press up against and just make sure that it's in all the way. If when you're using the computer, uh, a row of your keys doesn't work, or maybe just a couple of keys, or even one key, chances are that you probably didn't get this pressed in all the way, uh, and not all of the connections are making a uh, connection with the motherboard. So a certain section of the keyboard or certain keys themselves will not work if not all of those are pressed in. Um, sometimes I like to, after you do this, you don't have to do this, um, sometimes I like to reconnect power back to this, um, and then just test to make sure that the keyboard lights are lighting up. Um, this is a, a brand new machine, it doesn't have anything installed on it yet, or it's not running. Um, so in your case it will be a little easier and faster to do that. Um, so you might just want to plug in power, turn it on. Once you're all connected it's okay to do that. You don't want to connect power to it before you're connecting all these wires. Um, make sure that too that your battery's out of this when you're, when you're doing all this and unplugged from power. Um, <clears throat> that said, next thing we'll just go ahead and set the keyboard down in place. You see these little lips down here at the bottom. You've got, just kind of fits into place. There'll be little little places for each one of those to fit. As you can see, once they're all down, sometimes this side will kind of be up. So you just want to make sure they're all down in there. And then you're just going to set it in place, starting on the top right-hand side. Move to the left. And now our keyboard is back into place. And everything is, uh, is all done. Bottom plate is on, and our secondary hard drive is completed. I will say that once you get the uh, computer started up, the hard drive itself uh, may need to be formatted because it would have been tested here and we would put an OS on it, tested the hard drive. So the OS may still be on there, it's just a blank OS that you can't really do anything with. Um, but you'll just want to go ahead and, and go into your, your um, load into Windows and then click on your little start circle, right click on properties, right click on computer, excuse me, then choose manage. And then once you're in there, click Disk Management. You'll see both of your hard drives in there. Um, you just want to want to go ahead and delete all the partitions on your second hard drive. And then once they're all deleted, you might have to delete them a couple of times. Delete the information and then the partition. But once you have one large drive that's all black at the top, you right-click it again and create new simple volume. And then that you just next, next, next all the way through that. Now you've got it working. Um, sometimes you also have to turn, make sure that it's turned online if it was turned offline uh, by your, your SATA controller. Uh, there's two little boxes that you'll see, a little box that tells you what disk it is. You're going to want to right click on that box and turn it online if it's offline. Uh, if you have any other questions about this or if you're not comfortable doing it, you can just email into our service department at service at exoticpc.com. We'll happily answer any questions that you have. Um, it's going to be easiest and fastest probably to email in your questions just due to the amount of uh, phone calls and emails that we'll be receiving about this. We are sending out quite a number of brackets. Um, so if you, once again, if you have any questions, just let us know. I'll reiterate again, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, please don't do it. Just contact us and we'll work it out so that uh, we can do it for you. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching our video and good luck to everyone doing this.